Runs here. Yeah, I really like uh, Land of Plenty. He's drawn out, but mightn't be a disadvantage. He's just riding quietly, staying, staying clean there down the side and, and one crack at him, and he'll be really hard to beat as well. All right, that's the inside word from Stephen Owen. The second of the group ones, we start with the top weight half of James Cummings, James McDonald, old stager. He was super last start in the Epsom. Oh, it was a tenacious win in the Epsom, and uh, he's in great form. He loves Caulfield. He's got to be a big chance to win again. How does the old timer look, Jane? Well, his parade is generally pretty uniform and pretty consistent. He's a force that you know what you're going to get. He's a consummate professional, and the way he's wandering around today would suggest he's going to go another big race. Number two is Jungle Cat, Charlie Appleby, James Doyle won a group one on debut here three weeks ago. First try 1600. And the Sir Rupert Clark, great ride from James Doyle, well prepared by Charlie Appleby. And the way he hit the line there, I think the mile's going to be a, going to be a positive. Number three, Blackheart Bark, Darren Weird, John Allen leads to lift. Hasn't won in a while, uh, almost 600 days. Look, everyone loves Blackheart Bart, he's been a, a fantastic campaigner. He's not what he was, but if he got the right run and he could wind back the clock, who knows? Number four, Shalini, Chris Waller, Michael Walker, ran out of her skin in the Epsom. That oh, was a terrific run. Uh, she gets back. She can just reel up incredible sections. Um, look, the race, they roll along at a good tempo, and I think she might get a similarly run race here. She's certainly a quirky mare. She's played up at Caulfield previously, but she's lovely and relaxed today, which I think is a good sign. She's at her peak fitness here. Number five, Land of Plenty, DK Weird, Damien Lane, drawn poorly, but uh, low flying. Oh, it was terrific in the Sir Rupert Clark. Uh, just didn't go his way, couldn't get him for cover, and he probably just peaked along his run a little bit late there, but uh, the, the vein of form that he's in, he's got a great chance. He's a deserved favourite. He's matured into a genuine racehorse. I think this has always been his target. He's at his peak. The team have maintained his physique beautifully, so he's had an ideal preparation. I don't think there's any chinks in his armour. Dollar for Dollar is horse number six, McAvoy and Curry, coming off the best run of his career with a close second in the Rupert Clark. Yeah, but one thing about Dollar for Dollar, consistent and is a winner. I know it was touched off last start, but gee, it was a game performance on speed. And uh, a lot will depend on it, what the sort of run he gets early in or mid-race uh, this time around. He's not out of it. Number seven is the Pride of Tasmania, Hello the Street, to Scott Brunton, Dean Holland. Second up, got a little bit defined, but has a good record. Look, wasn't disgraced behind uh, Jungle Cat last start, and I'm sure won't be far away again today. Number eight is a scratching. Number nine, Light in My Veins, Ma, Eustace, Linda Meach, another on pacer. Yeah, and another one probably had a bit of an excuse last start, but um, I just felt that I wanted to see a little bit more that all that uh, taken into account on the on the last run. So I was looking elsewhere. Number ten, Dewa, Chris Waller, Michael D, improving there. She won the Shannon at the Group Two level last start. Oh, look at her overall record: seven wins, five seconds from fifteen starts. She is a genuine ripper. Third up, ready to uh, I think go very close in this race with even luck. She's an athletic racehorse, so the 1600 metres is certainly going to suit her physically and she's lovely and quiet in the yard. I can't make any comparisons with her, but from what I can see, she's in good shape. Number 11, Siege of Quebec, a Waterhouse spot and Baxter. He's threatened to deliver a killer punch at this level. Yeah, and I thought he was very brave, uh, close enough to his speed after an, an incident early in the race. I was probably vulnerable late, so once again, a lot will de depend on the kind of run Siege of Quebec can, 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 can get in the early part of the race. Number 12, Cliff's Edge, Darren Weir, Craig Williams, wide barrier. Doesn't really know to run a bad race, uh, step to the mile suits, um, two, with 52 on his back, he looks another good ride for Craig Williams. He's a laid back individual, he conserves his energy for the task ahead, he's hard to knock once he gets to his peak fitness, he's there, so uh, he parades well and he generally races well. Team Hawks have number 13, Kingsguard, Patrick Maloney rides, good draw. Form around Noir as well, so third up, up to the mile, had a good run, needs to probably raise the bar again today. Murakev is horse number 14 for Lindsay Park, Corey Parrish, inside gate and a super run of the Epsom. Yeah, brave run, wasn't it, on that speed to uh, finish where Murakev did, did and uh, should uh, be close enough and get a nice run from gate one today as well. What do you make of number 15, Radipole, for Michael Moroni? I thought um, it was a touch disappointing last start, it was out the back and never made any headway. I didn't like the late splits in that race, so I thought it was uh, pretty easy to oppose. Number 16, Lord Langley is a Japanese veteran for Darren Weir, Dean Yendel, making his Australian debut. Yeah, we're just in the dark with this one. Uh, $81, you'd like a push from the market. So, look, a lot of Weary's improved the run. An eight-year-old as well, prefer to see. Waging war, McDonald and Lewis. Ben Thompson steers from a, a good draw. Yeah, only run over the course and distance. It was a terrific win in the Vobus Gold Mile back in April. If he can recapture that form, he'll go close. Number 18, Al Passer for Ken Keyes. Bo Mertens has to negotiate a tough game. Yeah, and it's really step up. I think this is the toughest test to date for this gallop who's been basically an open class 
a races, but uh, I think there might be too much pressure here. And fierce impact. Uh, not fancy to the moment, Matthew Smith, but he closed well at Rose Hill three weeks ago. He did. So this is improvement to come out of the, on the back of that run. Um, look, this is this is a much tougher test, so it'd be hard to recommend. But you know, I didn't mind that running behind Tip Top. Talk about a tough, deep race, uh, Hutchie. Where are you going? In this well, one? I think you need odds as a consequence, and I'm happy enough to go with Waging War. Outside of Waging War, there's a lot you can make a case for, like I said. But Noir, I think the Five Land of Plenty is a, a great chance, and well, Jungle Cat, uh, one, you know, was for terrific in the Sir Rupert Clark, so that's the one I'm heading. Okay, the Bs, Brett and Ben have gone with Shillelagh, uh, Shane with Siege of Quebec, and uh, Jungle Cat is the selection from Matt to Jane. What caught your eye? Well, I am with the, the old timer here and the one Hartner. As I mentioned, he's a consummate professional. Basically, what you see is what you get from him, and I thought his parade was just as good as I'd seen him before. So I think he can carry top weight, and I'd really like to see him uh, get up on top here. So Hartnell for me, ahead of Noir, who I thought paraded in terrific order, and Cliff said I'd have to give him a push. Uh, once he's at his peak, he's very difficult to fault. All right, there you go, Jane Ivels picks of the yards. Land of Plenty is all the rage here, folks. Uh, been the best back late. Straight after the 1,000 guineas, the Darren Weir runner from that wide barrier was absolutely plunged here with uh, Sportsbet. Into $4.40 now, as you can see. With that, Shalala's gone from $6 out to $7.50 today. Hartnell steady at the $8. Jungle Cat, a little bit of speaking Cliff's edge as well. There you go, Land of Plenty. I'll come back with a market move and get your bets on for the two-back. Okay, the horses behind the barriers, just looking at the, the pace of the race, and we heard Stephen Arnold's comments uh, before, uh, Clint, uh, do you expect Land of Plenty to get favours in that regard? Well, I think you get the pace he needs. I mean, he's, I think from the, the gate, his general race pattern, it, it, it's well known. I mean, he's going to get back, he's going to just look to, to get on the back of one. He might not have to go right back in the field, but, you know, sort of midfield, uh, three or four deep with a little bit of cover, he can unleash a great turn of foot. Luck and running is going to, going to be a big part of this race. But what I do see, David, is, is good tempo, which usually means that, uh, you know, they could get their, their luck and running. Simon, quick uh, market mover. Yeah, it's number five, Gary Lee, going for back-to-back -back group ones here. Land of plenty. He's your market mover into $4.20 now. Big field moving in for the group one two-rack handicap. Here's Matt Hill. Great day. Yes, a thumping field of 18 of them moving into the stores. And land of plenty, well backed early, and uh, has sustained that four dollars and twenty cents on the official prices. Land of plenty, and you're getting five dollars twenty at the moment on the totes. Now jungle cats about to come forward. The Rupert Clark winner, Redder Pole, being preceded by dollar for dollar one of the pace aspects in the race, Been by Luke Curry, who won this race 15 years ago on Roman Arch. Radapol goes up, waging war, recruiting the late closer, Ben Thompson, there's hell of a street, goes forward the Tasmanian Hope, Hartnell, about to join them, takes one more turn, the eight-year-old Cliff's Edge, with Craig Williams in the saddle wearing a black distinguishing cap. Cliff's Edge. There is $15 on BOP's 13.40 the tote goes up. There's Hartnell forward. El Paso joins the line. Land of plenty. Siege of Quebec is rightless at the moment. And Black Heart Bath, the other eight-year-old in the race, also to take his position. Siege of Quebec wants to dig the heels in at the moment. Just doesn't want to budge with the barrier attendant. The lead out and Siege of Quebec is slowly but surely moving up towards the barriers. Lord Langley stands patiently out wide. Siege of Quebec goes in. Lacar Bart about to take a middle stall and that will leave Land of Plenty the favourite. Field of 18 for the Actress Turak handicap at 1600 metres. Now Radapole stands patiently alongside of Jungle Cat. Jockey James Doyle with a white distinguishing cap. Land of Plenty takes the outside stall for Damien Lane. And they're ready for the Turak handicap. Set to go the 1600 metres. Gates.
Let's Crash and Racing, Radapola away fairly out wide. Lightning in my veins began well with King's Guard and right behind those horses, Noir Jungle Cat, dollar for dollars, forcing forward with Cliff's Edge. Hell of a Street wants a piece of the action with Blackheart, Bart Radapole goes back to about ninth. Passed by El Paso and they were followed by Noir and next is Hartnell waging more Murakeb. Then Siege of Quebec as they climb the hill up towards the 1100 metres. Behind them Land of Plenty and then came Fierce Impact Shillelagh and six lengths to Lord Langley. So Halifa Street took the lead but worked at the 1000 metres, three quarters of a length to Cliff's Edge. They were followed by Light in My Veins, third the inside. El Paso three deep on the improve from dollar for dollar. Blackheart Bart is three deep. It's around Jungle Cat and Kingsguard from Hartnell. Further back is Radapole at the 800. They were followed by Siege of Quebec and Waging War as they string out from Noir. Further back, Land of Plenty would spot the speed about 15 from Murakeb and Fierce Impact Shillelagh and six lengths Lord Langley. So it's El Paso has worked over time but went to the front of the 500 metres. Two lengths in front of Cliff's Edge giving chase then Halifa Street who's getting tired passed by dollar for dollar. Then came Siege of Quebec. Hartnell runs on from Black Heart Bar. Land of Plenty is tracking into the race only four off the lead. It's El Paso and Cliff's Edge into the straight at the 250 from Siege of Quebec. Hartnell the middle and they were followed next in the field by Land of Plenty running on at the 150. Land of Plenty descends, takes the lead from Hartnell, Siege of Quebec and Land of Plenty's going to race clear. Land of Plenty won the two rack by a length Hartnell. Third Siege of Quebec, fourth Shillelagh from Waging War Noir, followed by Cliff's Edge. Back behind those horses, Radapole, Fierce Impact, Murakeb, El Pasim, Dollar for Dollar, Kingsguard, Jungle Cat, Light in My Veins, Halibur Street, Blackheart Bart and a long gap to Lord Langley. For the fourth time in five years, Darren Weir has won the Aquas Turak Handicap Land of Plenty under the guidance of Damien Lane. A lot of money for him and he's landed the prize. $3.82 has defeated Hartnell. What a run by the top weight. $3 to place. James McDonald for Godolphin and James Cummings. And game one out to Adrian Bob for Siege of Quebec in third. Stephen Bastard in the saddle at $4.10. 5, 1 and 11. Many people had Land of Plenty pegged as a potential Group 1 horse, Clint Hutchison. Today was his day and he was outstanding. Oh, it was an easy watch if you're on him as well. A lovely ride from Damien Lane. He oozed confidence as he swept into the straight. And it looked a deserved victory, let's be honest, because he was so brave in the Sarupa Clark when he tasted defeat behind, of course, Jungle Cat. And, uh, well, it was Hartnell from Godolphin today that provided most resistance. And uh, what a brave run from Hartnell, who's just been in cracking form as preparation. But just a beautiful win today from Land of Plenty for Damien Lane, who's now going to chat to Chris Sons. Well, Damien Lane, it was going to take a peach of a ride to get him over the line today from that awkward draw, and you did it. Yeah, I was lucky there was good speed on and with a lovely tow into the race and the horse uh, did the rest. Uh, you know, it must be hard going into a group one like that, knowing that the odds are against you with the barrier. Obviously the pace was there to help you, but uh, what what do you actually think when you when the gate's open? Did you have a game plan? Uh, we were going to chance our hand to try and get in midfield and he didn't begin that well and with the solid speed, I ended up a bit further back than anticipated, but... Uh, it didn't matter, come the corner, they bunched up and like I said, he was too good. That was group one, number 13, so it's fantastic for you. I'm sure Michael, your father, and, and Vic, your mum, are just absolutely stoked back in WA. Yeah, everyone will be watching. Uh, I've got a herd of little brothers and sisters, so uh, most of them when you tuned in, Dad will either be uh, on the phone working or drunk at the pub one but two, uh, cheering home. So, no, uh, good result. I must thank her. Uh, well, and the rest of the ownership group for keeping me on him. Um, when he was down the weights, I thought I might lose a ride on him, but they stuck that, and uh, it's just great to be a part of the weird camp. They're flying, and uh, the privilege is all mine. And talk to me about the weight. Obviously, that's an issue, but you've managed it, and you've got down to the weight. Yeah, it's not, not every day I ride 53, but a little bit of extra work went into this weight, but uh, it's worth it when it pays off like this. Well done, Crossy. Thanks, Bert, man. Brilliant ride, Damien Lane. Uh, Darren Weir joins me again. Channel 7's Darren Weir. Uh, Racing.com's Darren Weir, if you don't mind. Uh, Weary, you've set this race, this horse, for this race. Oh, Damien delivered it for you. Yeah, he certainly did deliver it. He uh, yeah, got the perfect card into it. I was sitting there watching it with Tyson. and I said, oh, give it, hope that one in the blue carts him to the top of the straight, and then we'll be right. And it's exactly what happened, you know. So, uh, got a beautiful card into it, and... Um, you know, the Rupert Clark and the Turak were the races that we sort of targeted for him and because he's a great type of horse, got a nice pedigree and, you know, still a stallion, so he's a group one winner now and um, 
Yeah, well, I don't know whether it'll be his last one either, the way he went. Well, he was sensational. Four of the last five you've won this race, and you've tried to make it as a stallion race, and now you've done it again. Oh, it's a nice race. To, it's a handicap race, so it suits, you know, you can target a nice horse on the way up, and, um, yeah, it's great. You know, the owners have been terrific to deal with. Um, let me sort of do whatever we've wanted to do, and um, they've got the result that they wanted, I guess. It's called the Turok Handicap. You might be moving there the way you go, and you'll be buying a house. <laughs> no, 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 just keep putting it into the stadium, Richard. <laughs> well done, mate. Well done. Yeah, what a performance. Um, oh, a plan came together there. Uh, Stephen Arnold, who joins me now, uh, really confident ride from Danny Lane. He didn't panic, he didn't step that well, but he got tempo and he just kept the horse in beautiful rhythm. Yeah, exactly. Like he took his time early, and uh, the key part of the race was probably down the side of it, down the side where uh, Seizure could could that rolled forward, and that just gave him that beautiful drag yeah. into the race. Um, when it, when it moved, it sort of it, it faced the breeze and, and got him into the race. And Damien was able just to bide his time, take his time around the corner. The horse has got a beautiful turn of sprint, but he had, uh, turn of foot, but he has a little long sustained run, so he was able just to nurse him to the furlong and then and then to produce him, and he, uh, he, he put it to bed pretty quickly. They weren't hanging about. They were rolling in that race, weren't they? It, it sort of looked the case on paper, which always well, doesn't always work out that way, but yeah, they were rocking and rolling early. There was sort of a couple caught wide, and they, they have to force on, so that always um, generates a fair bit of speed. What can you say about Hartman? He's a great old horse, isn't he? Yeah, he tried his heart out. I thought he ran great, you know, with that weight. Um, he was challenged, and he really, really dug deep and tried his heart out. He was a great run. Yeah, superb effort there, but all honours with Darren Weir, Landon Plenty, Damien Lane, well done all. Fantastic performance, sweeping down the middle of the track and uh, getting a victory in this year's two-rate. Let's take a quick break and we'll come back more on the other side. <laughs>